Today, we're going to dive into tuning our new Gen 3 ECU platform GTO, so stick around. What is going on everybody and welcome back to the garage and as you can see we have gotten ourselves a 2004 GTO and in fact this thing is still dirty. I haven't even had it 24 hours but we're going to dive into tuning it right away. And I say that we're going to dive into tuning it but what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to kind of do a initial setup of some things that we can do to verify that the car is ready to tune, check the existing tune that's in it, and just make sure that everything's ready to go before we actually go through the process of tuning it. There's a few things that we can check to make sure that everything's kind of working all right and nothing's completely out of whack that's going to save us some headaches down the road. So first and foremost, if you haven't subscribed already, make sure go down and subscribe because this is going to be a long series in which we do a lot of different things to this thing. We'll get into real-time tuning, we'll get into custom OSs, all that fun stuff. This is going to encompass the third gen platform, P11, or 411s, P01s. This is a P59. This is one of the, if not the last generation uh, Gen 3 ECU that, that we're going to see. But all of this information really just is going to work on any of your early F bodies, your C5 Corvettes. Uh, it's even going to bleed into a lot of the trucks into the mid-2000s, the Tahoes, Escalades, etc. These things cover a lot of different platforms up until we get into the Gen 4 stuff, which is the E38s and the E68s, uh, you know, the C6 Corvette era, things like that. So you're not going to want to miss out as we go through all of this information, and we're going to try and break it down into a lot of very small digestible parts. So subscribe so you don't miss out on any of that. First things first. Let's jump over to the laptop. Let's grab our as found. That's the first thing that we always do whenever it comes to tuning a new vehicle. We grab an as found file that we're going to put away to the side, keep it forever, never touch it again. And that's going to be our basis that we can go back and compare our stock values for our car before we do anything else. Let's jump over and do that now. So we're actually uh, tuning on a new little miniature laptop here called the Asus. It is a uh, E210M is the model number. I'm going to do a review on this later on as it's our latest in tuning with a cheap laptop. This thing was about 200 bucks brand new on Amazon and it is a brand name laptop. Uh, you know, an Asus, Asus, however you want to say it, as opposed to some of the Chinese ones we've done in the past. And so far I've been pretty happy with the performance on it. But let me see if I can get this thing close enough to get plugged in. Ugh. And of course, we're using our MPVI 2 Plus. And I've got two credits loaded up here, though we're not going to need the credits today. Okay, we've opened up our editor for the first time. This is a new installation. Everything is from the factory. The only thing that we've got to do is reseek the interface, which I've already done. But we'll go ahead. You go up into help. You plug in. It's going to send it up. Verify all of your credits and stuff are there. Make sure that the interface works for you. And now we're going to go ahead and read the vehicle. I probably need to put the key in, though. It's not going to work until I do that. Where did I put the keys? Here we go. Okay, we've gathered the info. We can see that we've got a P59 ECM. Uh, this is more of a PCM than anything because it's going to control both the transmission and the engine, whereas in later generations we have an ECM and a TCM. But let's go ahead and read this. It'll take a couple minutes, so we won't even do anything. Let's just skip ahead, and we'll talk about kind of what we're going to do next. Okay, I've gone ahead and moved into the car here. As you can see, we've got a minute and 19 seconds left. Once this thing gets done loading, we're going to save this as that as found, as I said. We're going to fire the car up, back it out of the garage, and let the thing start warming up and jump over to the scanner. And I'm going to talk about some of the things that we want to monitor on the scanner from the get-go. That's going to give us some insight onto how the car is running. And so that's going to be some critical information to pay attention to. And this is going to give us a good idea whether or not we're ready to start going out there and romping on this thing and making adjustments to the factory tune. Uh, we're going to do some adjustments to the stock, leave it completely stock. We'll go out and do a pull with the draggy, see what it does, see if we can make any improvements just with the draggy from a stock standpoint. And then after that, 
we might have some mods on the way. Might, uh, might be throwing some boost at it. I don't know. You'll just have to stick around and see. Okay, as our download is finishing up here, we're going to have a window that pops up. It's going to allow us to save this. And I'm going to go ahead and go in. You can see all this is there, even though it's not actually there. Yes, I know. Quit complaining. Let's create a new folder for this. New folder. 2004 GTO. I'll open that up. And we're just going to label this as our as found. And now we're going to do a save as. Let's go ahead and do a save as. I'm just going to call it first edit for now. And that way I have a file that I can edit whenever I'm ready to start making changes to the tune. But for now, we'll go ahead and open up the scanner. We can close out our editor because we're not going to be making any edits today. And let's fire the car up. Back her out of the garage here. So had to connect a few times. It wasn't wanting to connect, but now that we are connected, we're going to repull for supported parameters. And this is what goes in there and looks at the vehicle, sees what the platform is, sees all the parameters that we can use on it. And as you can see, it's already done. So we're going to come in here. We can start recording right away and see if anything pulls up. I have a sneaking suspicion it's not happy right now, and I may have to reboot the laptop maybe a strike against the old cheap laptop right now because you as you can see it wasn't showing a vehicle connected gathering vehicle information calibration oh there we go now it's connecting just fine okay 2004 pontiac gto and we can repull for supported parameters. Shouldn't need to do that after the first time. Anytime that there's an update to the software, though, you want to repull for supported parameters and see if they've added any new parameters. So the first things that we can do is come in here and delete any of them that are gray. These are broken links. That means they're not present on this ECU. So let's get rid of all those. So we're not even trying to pull those. You see there's quite a bit on a third generation. Obviously, engine RPM, vehicle speed, those are two big ones that we're always going to want to have. ECT, IAT, another two big ones, mass airflow, intake manifold, absolute pressure, timing advance. Here comes the first one that we're going to want to add. So let's go to add channel and we're going to want to put in knock. And it may be knock retard, knock timing, whatever it is. Go ahead and add that in. What just happened? Where did you go? knock there we go so stop there we go so we've added knock retard in we've got throttle position that's an sae throttle position i'm going to remove that one because sae throttle position doesn't read the way that we normally read throttle position and so what we can then do is go in and look for throttle position and we're going to take the non sae throttle position in this case this is going to align with the zero to 100 percent that we're used to seeing and so it's going to be a better indication of what we actually want to see for throttle position i'm going to go ahead and remove the gauges on here we'll leave the chart versus time for now but we've got our spark retard and our spark advance these are built on manifold absolute pressure our spark tables probably aren't actually built on those they're going to be built on cylinder air mass and so I'm going to be looking for an air mass parameter also. And there it was, cylinder air mass. Oh, you know what? This uh, goofy little touchpad has can be turned into a 10 key. And that's why it keeps on going off whenever I'm trying to click things. So we've added cylinder air mass. We have our, old, our O2 voltages on there. We do want to kind of pay attention to our O2 voltages some, but we're more concerned with our short-term and long-term fuel trims. And then I'm going to come down in here and I'm going to go ahead and add the misfire channels in the current ones. I'm not too concerned about the histories. Let's double click all these. Might be quicker just to hit enter. Cylinder two, get in there. Okay. 
So we wanna list those also. So our big ones are, we're looking at engine RPM, vehicle speed, ECT, IAT, mass airflow. We can add mass airflow sensor in here if we want to. We're gonna use it later whenever we're doing mass airflow tuning. We can go ahead and add that now if we wanted to. Not critical at this point in time because we're not gonna use the frequency reading for making any decisions on how well the, the tune is running. The big things that we're gonna be looking for though is knock retard, and we're gonna be looking at our fuel trims to see how our fuel trims are balancing out both the left and are the long terms and the short terms. Hopefully what we're gonna see is long terms that aren't too far off since this is a stock vehicle and short terms that are hovering around zero because this thing should be fairly learned on the long terms. Before we start recording though, let's go ahead and go into our diagnostics and info. Let's read our DTCs. Obviously, uh, we're gonna have a issue with not completing all of our checks because we just did a read. And then we have a theft deterrent fuel enable signal not received. Pending history, I'm not sure why that would have been there. We'll go ahead and clear that out. Good to go there, no DTCs. But we have no DTCs that are gonna cause any red flags. The theft deterrent system did get set off yesterday whenever they were unloading the car, and it may be related to that. So let's go ahead and start recording. And right away, we're showing no knock retard. We're showing 15 degrees at idle. That's kind of what we like. And our long-term fuel trims are only 2%. Short terms are negative one. So that's uh, basically 1% of correction right there. That's pretty good. I'm gonna leave it on spark retard. I've gotta go get some uh, new windshield wipers for this thing and some uh, leather wipes because the leather seats are very, very dry and I wanna get those things kind of uh, conditioned. And so I'm gonna collect some data as I go down to advanced auto and then whenever I get back, we're gonna go over the data, get an idea how everything looks and make some uh, decisions from there about whether or not we're ready to start tuning. I will have to say so far, I'm very much in love with this car. I had a 2005 GTO with the LS2, uh, you know, the six liter. And honestly, I was looking for a Gen 3 platform. So I was looking at Camaros and, and Firebirds and stuff like that. And uh, because GTOs are, are they're just expensive. They're getting expensive unless they have 180,000 miles. They're starting to go back up in value. Uh, but at the same time, to find a uh, Camaro or a Firebird that wasn't completely clapped out, it was getting pretty pricey in its own right. And so I kept on looking, I kept on looking, and I just sat down and told myself, you know, honestly, the GTO that I had, my 05 uh, was black, red interior, six-speed manual. And I said, you know, honestly, that's been one of my favorite cars. I, I traded it in on my 2008 Corvette whenever the LS3s came out. I really wish I hadn't have done that, but between you and me, somebody threw up in that car and it got down underneath the center console and it smelled like Crown and Coke. It was just terrible, the smell. I couldn't get it out of the carpet, and so that was part of the reason I traded it in. Well, stumbled across this beauty. It's got about 35,000 miles on it, so it's, uh, I think technically it is a two-owner car, but the first owner had it almost its entire life up until like the last year or so. So I think the second owner may have actually just been a different dealership that got recorded as an owner. Uh, and it's Barbados blue, which is the rarest color uh, out of all the GTOs ever made. So, you know, uh, there was only like 500 ever made in this color. It's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous color. And I spent a little bit more money than I wanted to on it, but I think it's something that'll pay off in the long run, and I'm in love with it. It's a very solid car because of the low mileage. Uh, some of the bushings might be a little worn out on it, but what do you expect? The thing was built in 2004 and, you know, just needs some, some maintenance items for the most part. But going to an LS1, this is technically my first LS1. I, you know, I've had LS2s, LS3s, uh, various different truck uh, variations of the LS, but this is the first time I've ever had an LS1, and so I'm kind of super excited. This has the drive-by cable throttle instead of drive-by wire. Feels a little bit weird because it takes a lot more uh, pedal uh, pressure to actually get this thing to go, whereas you don't realize how easy it is to push the gas on a drive-by wire until you get back into something like this. And then it also has the old crappy uh, round map that uh, you know can't go into a larger tube it runs out of resolution and, and the ecu doesn't really matter because it, it maxes out like four thousand pounds per hour anyways and so that's why on this platform a lot of times you'll see once people go to boost they're going to go over to an sd setup 
and especially because you can run a two bar SD with real time tuning. And so I'll be anxious to check that out. We'll do the math real time tuning also, just to have some fun and play around with that. But we've got a lot of different options to break out on this platform and go over some of the different things that we can do. Okay, we're back. And is it me or the prices of windshield wipers kind of insane right now? I bought leather wipes and windshield wipers for this thing. I'm pretty sure it cost me 80 bucks. So let's get into what we've got. We've got our data log here and we can look at one thing that jumps out right away. Look at our spark retard table. We have some spark retard and what that tells me is this, that this thing probably has 87 octane in it. Honestly, I need to run this tank down to pretty close to empty, fill it up with uh, 93 and go out and re-log this thing and see if any of this spark disappears because you can see we're pulling like four or five degrees down here at 1600 RPMs. That's dropping our timing down to 14, which is a lot in that mid, like where you're looking for the torque. We're losing quite a bit of power right there that could be fixed just by running better fuel. That's why running high octane fuel is very important. So let's jump over our long-term fuel trims. We're lean across the board, not dangerously so. This is what I kind of expect a factory vehicle to look like. We're ranging from 1% to 4%. Uh, you know, we, we have a couple spots here that might be just a little bit rich on idle. If we jump over to our short-term fuel trims, we have some erroneous data, what it looks like in here, but for the most part, this all adds up. If we were to take these two together and put them in, you know, we're within that four or five percent total error that we're going to be looking for across the board. That means that this thing's pretty dialed in on the air fuel side. Now, I will tell you, I know just from uh, past experience that we're going to be a little bit rich uh, on PE, more rich than we need to be on a naturally aspirated setup. We could probably squeeze out a little bit more power by leaning out the PE, and we'll talk about that later whenever we get to uh, making some adjustments to a stock tune file to try and get some more power out of a stock vehicle. Uh, so those are kind of the big things that I want to look at. Other than that, we can look at our ECTs are getting up to 198 degrees, 190 whenever we're driving. That's pretty typical. Uh, IAT 75 right now, it's about 70 degrees outside. So it means that the factory air intake actually is drawing from a fairly cool place on the front of the car. It's that it pulls air from in front of the radiator. That seems to be working out pretty well right there. Uh, we can play this through and we'll play it at one X speed right here and kind of look at our O2 voltages. The big thing about this is these things are never going to line up uh, and they're always moving. They're always hovering around 450 millivolts or 0.45 uh, stock. And so we're expecting these to move. They move above and below that and it averages that value out to determine what kind of fueling to do in closed loop. What we are looking for is to make sure that these things are oscillating properly. If they're not oscillating properly, it can be an indication that something else is happening in the vehicle, in the tune, might have uh, an injector that's causing issues, things like that. But right now we've got pretty good oscillation on both banks that looks good. That means our fuel system is probably good to go right now. And so we're not going to worry about that. Uh, in fact, whenever we go into, uh, we go into open loop here for a split second, come back. And I think this laptop maybe struggles a little bit with the screen recording software running at the same time as uh, everything else. So and see when we're okay so whenever we go into open the loop we see both values go high that's what we want to see and they are reading maxed out for the most part so the last thing that i really want to pay attention to was many misfires and so i'm going to come back here and i'm actually going to bump the speed up to about 5x and let this play through i'm going to be watching seeing a couple numbers pop up on here totally normal don't get freaked out if you see anything on the current misfires is whenever you see in excess of like 15 or 20, that is an indication that you are getting true misfires. You need to do some research. You probably got a spark plug wire that's burned or maybe a bad spark plug or a coil that's going out. But as you can see, as we scroll through this data at a high rate of speed, everything's staying zero. We saw one pop up to two very briefly for a split second. That's not a real misfire. That's just the calculation picking up a little bit of noise. And so unless we are getting a lot of misfires, we're gonna say that our ignition system's good to go. And based off of about everything that I've seen on here, this car 
totally fine. Ready to tune. We can start throwing parts at. We can do intake, exhaust, anything like that. We can do that. And we know that the base uh, of the vehicle itself is going to be ready to accept those parts. It's going to be ready to allow us to start tuning. We're not going to be banging our heads against any mechanical issues beforehand. And this goes a long way in the world of tuning is making sure that everything is mechanically sound before you start getting into the software side of it. Because if there is something wrong mechanically, you are never going to be able to fix it by tuning. You're going to chase your tail and it's just going to cause you frustration. It's going to cause you to hate tuning. It's going to cause you to give up and quit. So having a solid mechanical foundation is critical and hopefully these steps will help you to understand some things that you can look for to make sure that your mechanical foundation is ready to go so you can start your tuning process. Listen, I'm going to wrap it up right here. Uh, as I said, stick around. I've got some more stuff coming out here soon. We're going to be doing a video on a couple of wide bands. You guys suggested some that you'd like to see. We're going to be doing the glow shift one, which I'm kind of excited about because it's an analog. I've always wanted an analog wide band. The only problem is nobody makes a Lambda one, so that one is in AFR only. I've already got some critiques on it that we'll talk about whenever we do an unboxing review on it. And we're also doing the new MTXL from Innovate. This supposedly is the new super fast reading, top of the line, uh, wide band on the market. Uh, so should be an interesting comparison. We'll bring them both into the scanner, look at the data side by side and see maybe the MTXL does read faster. We'll see you know, if there's any bank uh, divergency and stuff like that. So it'll be, be some interesting stuff. And we'll do that as we start adding some mods and go through the different tuning steps. So hit that subscribe button. If you wouldn't mind, go ahead and throw a like out there. If you've got any questions, hit up the comments. Check out the Patreon, especially if you want a chance to win our new cheap tuning laptop. We'll be giving that away after I do the review. I'm going to get back to it. You guys know the drill. ABT, always be tuning. Thanks for stopping by the garage.